Jen Velasquez, Grade 6 teacher of Mayamang Central School. Today, we're going to study different methods of separating mixture. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to enumerate and identify the different methods of separating mixtures. Have you been to the beach? Have you tasted the water while swimming? How does it taste? That's right, it tastes salty because the seawater is a solution of salt and water. How are we going to separate the components of salt and water? What method are we going to use? What do you see in the picture? Very good! These two men are collecting salt. But wait, where did they get it? The two men collected the seawater and placed it in an open space under the extreme heat of the sun. While the water is under the extreme heat of the sun, it undergoes a process called evaporation. It is the process in which liquid state changes to gaseous state when there is an increase in temperature or pressure. There is another way of doing it by boiling the sea water. While the water is boiling, it changes to water vapor and retains the solid particles in a salt and water solution. After a few hours, you now have salt in your dining table. Salt is a very important ingredient in cooking and in food preservation. Next, we have milled rice grains. Milled rice grains has components of mixtures of rice stalks, rice husks, rice bugs, small seeds, and small stones. Have you observed your mother cook rice? What does she usually do before cooking it? That's right. She is hand-picking all the unwanted mixtures of rice grains. Hand-picking is a separation technique in which Substances in a mixture can be separated by just picking them out by hand. This method is used to separate slightly larger pieces of dirt, stalks, small stones, and small seeds from the milled rice grains. Next, we have flour. Flour has finer and bigger components of mixtures. What do bakers do to separate the finer and bigger components of flour? They use a material called sieve. Sieve is a porous material that allows the finer component to pass through and retain the bigger components of flour. The process of separating finer and bigger components mixtures of flour is called sieving. This separation technique is mainly used in a flour mill to separate impurities from wheat before grinding it. The sieve only removes particles of impurities that are larger than its pores. Another example of mixtures that has finer and bigger components is a mixture of sand and gravel. Construction workers use a bigger sieve to separate the finer and bigger components of sand and gravel. Our next mixture, bulalo soup. What do you notice in your bulalo soup? Do you notice the fat that floats on top of the soup? Taking in or ingesting too much fat is bad for the health, especially for the heart. So we need to separate the fats from the soup. So how are we going to separate the fats from the bulalo soup? We can separate it by scooping using a scooping spoon. This technique of separating mixture is called decantation. It is a process of separation of invisible liquid or of a liquid and solid mixture such as suspension. If you have a jar of muddy water, you will be amazed of how the water will become clear on its own if you leave it overnight without disturbing it. This technique of separating mixture is called sedimentation. 
Sedimentation is any particulate matter that can be transported by fluid and which is eventually deposited as a layer of solid material on the bed or bottom of a body of water or liquid. Our next mixture is the coconut milk. Coconut milk has small particles of the grated coconut. To separate the grated coconut from the coconut milk, we use a cloth with small pores. The small pores of the cloth allows the coconut milk to pass through it and retains the solid particles on the cloth. This process of separating mixture is called filtration. Filtration is a process in which insoluble solid is separated from a liquid. This huge machine is responsible in filtering water in the dam so that households in places like Metro Manila will have clean water in their faucet. Clean water is very important in our daily lives. We need clean water to survive. We use it in drinking and in preparing our meals. What do you see in the picture? Piles of waste materials. How are we going to separate the waste materials so that we will be able to dispose them properly? We need to use containers with labels such as paper, glass, plastic, metal, or simply biodegradable and non-biodegradable material. The process of separating waste materials according to their kind and properties is called segregation. Segregation of waste is the first step of waste management. It is the separation of biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste for proper disposal. Okay, what do you see in the picture? We have metals and non-metal materials. How are we going to separate metals from non-metal materials? What process is involved in separating metals and non-metal materials? We are going to use a magnet. The process of separating mixtures using a magnet is called magnetism. Mixtures of metal and non-metal materials can be separated using a magnet because metals are attracted to the magnet while non-metals are not. Big magnet is used in industries like junkyards to separate metal scraps from other materials. Let us now wrap up our lesson. What are the different methods of separating mixtures? Segregation, sedimentation, evaporation, decantation, hand picking, sieving, filtration, and magnetism. That's all for today. I hope you learned a lot from our lesson. I will see you again next time. Once again, this is teacher Jocelyn Velasquez, grade 6 teacher of Bayamon Central School, SDO1 Pangasinan. Happy to serve!